Hi all, just some quick help on chapter 10, in the chapter 10 project. Uh, you see here a completed project by one of your classmates who's, who has added a wolf class to the project. Um, and uh, they did this and the way you should do it is you should, you should copy probably the fox class and make a new class and just paste the code for the fox class in to the new class and then make start making modifications in the class and you should be able to figure it out it's pretty straightforward right um, you can look at look at, open up the fox or the rabbit class and and um, what while you're modifying the wolf class uh, modifying the code um, so so all three of these um, extend from this abstract class now why, why does it make sense to have the animal class abstract? I mean, if you think about it, there you can't make, there's no such thing as, uh, you can't make an animal, right? What would, what would that mean, right? Um, I mean, it's like you can't go to the zoo and find an animal. Um, you can find uh, types of animals, rabbits, foxes, wolves, but the animal is, is more of uh, some characteristics that animals, foxes and wolves and other animals have, right? So that's why it makes sense to have it as abstract. And um, let's, oops, let's just make this a little bit smaller. Good. Um, so, uh, we see here that it's declared as abstract, right? And also, we see that we're importing Java util list, right? Which is an interface. Um, and as you see here, we're, we're um, making a list of type animal. And exactly the uh, exactly how that list is implemented um, it could be an array or it could be an array list or, or something called a linked list um, doesn't doesn't matter particularly at this point but um, we know because of the nature of um, interfaces that um, any Anything that any class that implements the list interface must uh, have methods that are specified, sort of in the contract of the list interface. So uh, we know that that no matter which type of list we eventually use, they have the methods that the list class specifies. So that gives us flexibility later on to change the type of list that's actually used. Um, uh, very, very easily. Okay. Um, so let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to look at here? Not really. Uh, but you. Oh, right. So we do public abstract class animal, and you see some of the fields are completely. Some of the methods are completely defined. Like this method is co completely defined. Uh, this one says abstract. Right, meaning that. Uh, any method, any class that extends the animal class has to actually uh, implement um, a full version of the act method, right? And if we look in, say, the rabbit class, you'll see that the rabbit class has a complete act method here, right? And the abstract word is gone. And because there are no abstract methods within this class, it is not an abstract class, and we can actually make instances of the rabbit class. Okay, cool. We're going to look at the simulator method in just a minute, but let's first run this. So, uh, so what we get here is, this is our environment, and it has uh, the three types of animals in it, and I can't remember which color is which. But, um, and now let's, uh, 
let's run the long simulation. This is 4,000 steps. And here we go. And uh, I think the yellow is the rabbits, and the green is the foxes, and the purplish dots are the wolves. And the key is that all three here have to survive for the entire 4,000 steps of the simulation. And you do, you, you do that by adjusting the fields at the, or at the top of each um, uh, animal class. Things that you know, determine how often they have to eat, how long they live, how often they breed, things like that. And that did very well. Right? So we have all three. We have 59 foxes surviving. Oh, sorry, 59 wolves, 131 foxes, and a ton of rabbits. Cool. Excellent. Okay, so you have to be able to run it, reset it between each time, but run it three times, and each time have all three uh, species survive throughout the simulation. And you've got a nice environment. All right, let's just look at the simulator quickly. Um, scroll up to the top. All right, there are a bunch of uh, fields here that determine various things, like the fox creation probability probability and so on. Uh, I wanted to just, this is a little different, right? Um, so what does this mean? It means, this always means is a reference to the uh, object that this code is running, that, that is running this code. It's like saying me or I, right? Except it's the, it's the object in this case, the object of the class, and it says this, meaning me. So in this case, what happens if the default simulator is run, it says, okay, uh, call my uh, simulator, sorry, my uh, constructor that has two parameters, right? So it's kind of cool right, that it does this, right? So it says, okay, it looks for a constructor with two parameters, finds it, and says, okay, this is what I'll do, right? So if you don't specify a depth and width, like I just didn't when I just ran the simulator, it's going to use the default depth and width, which are specified up here as 120 and 80. Okay? Or you can call simulator with the two parameters directly and with your own depth and width. Right? Um, it does some, creates an array list here of type animal. Uh, so remember, animals was defined... Um, as a list, um, yep, list, right? So, uh, where's that? So the the particular type of list we're going to use is an array list. We could have used an array, um, an array list of animal. Okay. Uh, and if 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 at any point we wanted to change, um, we're doing it. We could just change array list to any other list type that implements uh, any other class that implements the list interface. All right. Cool. Uh, as I pause there, you know, I'm not sure that that array actually does implement the list interface, um, but certainly linked list does, and array list does. Those are, you know what array lists are. Linked lists are not covered in the AP curriculum, but you, you, they have some advantages and disadvantages. If you wanted to add a program that needed their advantages, you could just change this to linked list and everything would work just fine. Okay. So uh, let's look, eventually we call reset here. What does reset do? Uh, reset uh, clears the board, calls populate. Here's populate. And what this does is it goes through the two-dimensional array, the matrix, Right, the classic nested loops. The right, so uh, it's going to go uh, across down through the rows, and then for each row, go across through all the columns, and it basically says at each position, um, it, it it generates a random number if that is uh, less than the fox creation probability, it creates a fox. Else, it generates another random number if that's less than the rabbit creation possible probability. It creates a rabbit, and so on with wolf, right? And so it puts a bunch of these um, animals both in the two-dimensional matrix and also adds them to the 
list of animals, right? And um, I could spend more time on that, but I don't think we really need to. Um, there's not too much more there, so you're, you're obviously going to have to add some stuff here about the wolf, but um, you can just model, base that, base your additions on what's already there, okay? And you'll have to um, add some stuff up here, wolf creation probability, etc. All right. So, uh, so that is that. And if you do have any questions this weekend while you're working on this program, don't hesitate to get in touch, and I will um, be happy to help you out. Okay? But you should uh, get this done this weekend. Next week, we're going to start with the case study. We'll spend two weeks on it. Uh, it, it has a lot of similarities to, the, to this program and to the programs um, that we did in the, using the, putting the classes into the 2D environment. Um, so, uh, if you've followed along up to this point, the case study should be really easy for you, okay? But we'll go over it very carefully um, next week and the week after. Thanks, have a great weekend, and please try to get these programs into me. Thank you.